Hey guys, this is Lisa back with another video for you for Lisa Wise Designs and we're on day two of working on our recipe album. If you look back yesterday, we got our actual chipboard and everything covered and made into our album base and we decorated it with pattern paper as we went along. So if you're lost, don't know what I'm talking about, just go back a day and you will see how we got to this part of it. And if you would like to work along with me, go to the description in this video and you will see how you can pick up the kit in my Etsy shop that has everything in it you need to make this. All you need is your tools. Or you can pick up just the PDF version, which is just a tutorial. And you can make it with anything that you already have in your stash. So let's keep going. So if you're following along with me in your cutting guide, we kind of got through page nine yesterday. We got all the way through, oh, through page 10. I kind of skipped over here. So now we're starting on the top of page 11. Yesterday we made our binding, so now it's time to put that in here. So the binding that we made is going to kind of go right in the center. And on the top of page 11, it says lay the binding out. There's going to be about three quarters of an inch at the top because we need more room at the top for the glassine bag openings than we need at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is get my Tim Holtz ruler and I'm going to draw a half inch line from the very bottom. And right here on the spine area, I'm just gonna kinda draw that out a half of an inch so that this would fall right here. But if you look here, you got a little more room. You got about three quarters of an inch. It's not going to be centered and that's how it's designed. So you're good because your glassing bag openings are a little taller, right? Because this is gonna kind of go just like this. So we need more room at the top for that opening. So I just wanna tell you that so you not think you're doing something wrong if you think it's not center. So then what we're going to do is I'm going to look where these three tabs are sticking up and I want to make sure, I'm gonna move it up so you can see what I'm looking at. This piece of chipboard here, I wanna make sure they're right in the center of that piece of chipboard, these three tabs sticking up are binding strips and that's how you're going to know where to draw your line on your right and your left of where you want this to go. We know it wants to come down this far, but we need to know how far over we need to come. So I'm gonna pull this down a little bit where I can still see my chipboard here, this brown piece of chipboard. And I'm gonna make sure these three things are eyeball center right on top of that chipboard. And then I've got this kind of uh, straight and I'm gonna draw me a line here on my chipboard. So I know this is how far over to the right I want to be. This is how far down I want to be. So I'm just going to do a dry run. So if I line these two up, is that where I would want it to be? So even if it's not exactly center, we're going to cover this up with more pattern paper. We just want to make sure these tabs hit in the right spot. I think mine's good. All right, so now these two inch uh, rectangles on the ends is where I'm going to put my tape. I think this may be the last place that we actually use tape. I could be wrong. Maybe you use them with the glassing bags, but we're almost done with tape. And I'm kind of glad. I like to get to my art glitter glue because things go much faster, but anyway, anything worth doing is worth taking the time to do, right? <laughs> now, I don't put tape on the center section because I want to have some give in my spine. And this album is not very heavy. Um, I'm not putting tons and tons of flip flaps on there, so I don't have to worry about that. But I do want it to lay flat when I'm opening my pages. And by doing it this way, it helps um, for things to lay flatter. And I'll show you in my completed book in just a second. There we go. So that's all I did is I'm going around those two inch rectangles on the sides. And once again, I'm gonna make sure I've got a good stick by burnishing. Grab my album here. So, see if I'll be able to show you 
here. I don't have tape right here on the center section so that when these pull up and over, they, they lie flatter. And you're not able to do that on some albums because they're so heavy and so much going on, but this one works perfect for this technique. Okay, so all that's left to do is take the tape back, you know, and go her down. So, let's see if I can get this done without making such a big mess. I really need a different garbage can. I think one on each side. I like to go side to side <laughs> with my garbage sometimes. I know some people keep a small one on their desk, but you know, the, the more I, I scrapbook, the longer it gets, right? Your, your area gets smaller and smaller, right? Because your tools start coming in and like the walls start closing in on you. <laughs> so what you see that I did there sometimes where I flick my finger, I just wanted to explain that really quickly. Um, if I have some tape that hangs off a little bit after I put the liner, take the liner off, I just flick it back onto the project so it's not hanging out because tape never dries. It's not like wet glue. So the first thing that touches it is what's gonna stick, whether that's your project or dust later on. I've had that happen too. So if you don't want a, a dusty project, then that's gonna be <laughs> something that you'll look at. Okay, so stop talking and line this up. So I'm gonna line this up with the two lines that I drew wants to be kind of exact because I know that uh, I don't want uh, these pieces here to be in uh, the turn of the album. You want it to be right in the center of the spine that you created. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do a pretty good burnish. And I'm going to gently, gently, gently start closing. See, this is kind of come up a little bit, which is okay. So I'm just gonna kinda of use this, push it back. Here we go. So just go slow and easy, working your way up. If it wants to kind of come up on you, see I've got a little bubble here, I'm just gonna push it back down or push it out toward the ends until I get it just right, there we go. So now we can kind of easy, I can feel a lot of resistance there. I've got quite a few pieces now or layers in this spine or right on this turn. But it looks pretty good. Push down again. Just keep burnishing as many times as you need to to get this where it sticks. Now this is where it becomes real important not to push too hard you don't want to cause uh, a rip or tear right here by pushing on it too much. You just kind of have to get a feel for that because I have had that happen and tried to figure out a way to, <laughs> to make it where it didn't, you couldn't notice it anymore and it was a big album. Okay. Looks pretty good, pretty good. I'm very excited. So now let's add some cool stuff to it. Let me clean that just a little bit so I can get to my things. Put away my tape for now. And in your goodie bag here, you have something that looks like this. The back of it says Smeed on it, but it's two clear pockets. So you're gonna need those. Get those out and you're going to need your little pieces of mats that you cut for your inside cover and the cutting guide for that is on the bottom of page 11 so it tells you how to cut those out what I did is I cut the top off of this piece of paper so I just cut the tree piece right off the top by the cutting guide and kept this here okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have one side here and one side here so it kind of continues front to back. Isn't that a cute way to use big pattern paper? I love that. And I didn't want to cover it up once I figured out that it would fit perfectly right there. So that's when I came up with the clear pocket idea. So I'm hitting it with my vintage photo. 
You'll see me start using my ink a lot now. I really like the look of distressing. If you don't, like I said in the last video, you can just skip this stage if you don't like it, but um, most, if not all, pattern paper, I would say, is always going to have a white edge when you cut it because, you know, let's face it, it's got to be white paper in order to put that ink down, right? So I don't like the looks of that. So that's why one reason why I really like to distress. And you can get heavy-handed distressing where you can see a lot on the corners or you can just distress right here on the edge to knock back the white and not come over the, the side. It's up to you what you would like to see. If you're following along on your cutting guide, I am going to be now at the top of page 12. So you are going to glue these mats into place and all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I've got the same amount of space at the top, bottom, and one side. And I think that's going to be a quarter of an inch. Yes, it is. So if you wanted to measure or have something to kind of eyeball, it's a quarter of an inch from the top, the bottom, and then the outside edge of the album, depending on which one you're doing, the front or the back. So I'm gonna eyeball mine, but I know that it's going to be a quarter of an inch. Just like that. Don't you love it how you get quiet when you start measuring something? <laughs> it's kind of like I can't I can't do more than one sense at a time. So cool. So this should not come over to where you're bending, so we should not have another layer. And I've got mine's poking up just a little bit. I'm putting a little more glue there. Oopsie. So if you see any edges, there's lots of layers, like I said here, because we did lots of things. So if you see anything sticking up, just take your time, work around it, because it's not going to be totally flat, because I have, like I say, all these different layers going on. There we go. So there's nothing wrong with just keep fiddling a little bit with it. And you don't have to get in a hurry. So then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to kind of try to line this up. Yeah, that looks good. So cute. You know what I did? I put my back on my front and my front on my back. But I'm never going to tell anybody. <laughs> if I hadn't told you, you probably wouldn't know either. That's okay. Unless someone uh, points it out to them, no one will ever know. But that's funny that I did all that just so that it would continue. And then I put one on one side and one on the other. It's okay. It's okay. I tell my dog latte, it's okay. It'll be all right. Because I'm definitely not going to be able to pull that up since it's art glitter glue. And it looks fine. But it's just kind of funny. There we go. Love, love, love. Now we can put those pockets on. So the pockets are four by six, and this is six inches. So you should be good when you're trying to figure out exactly how to put this on. Now the way I do it is, you can see, here's the top of your pocket, right here. Make sure you know where your opening is, right there. And then here's the bottom. So starting at the bottom, what I'm gonna do is start peeling this back. I'm gonna get this started so that I can see the bottom piece. Turn it over here, and I'm just going to put that bottom piece, it's kind of hard to see, but because it's clear, I'm going to put it right down on the bottom, and I'm going to butt it up to the bottom of the pattern paper. It's almost the same size, maybe a little bit bigger, so you shouldn't have much of a problem lining that up. So I'm going to put this right on the bottom of the pattern paper, and just slowly work this up. There we go, just like that. And then just easy, easy. Make sure all of the glue sticks. Isn't that the cutest? And then you've gone to all this effort to put down this pattern paper and you'll still be able to see it because when you put, let me grab a tag. When you put a tag here, it'll go just like that. Now it's hard to see, there we go, now you can see. And then when you take it out, you can still enjoy the pattern paper. Cute. 
Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. These are called clear poly pockets. And I got them not at a craft store, I got them in an office supply store. I'm not sure how you use it with office supplies and maybe with index cards, maybe four by sixes, but that's what I used them. I saw them thought, hmm, I can use that. Do the same thing here, I'm just starting at the bottom. Just going to try and line up the bottom of that pattern paper that we just put down with the bottom of the pocket. Get that in place and then you can slide the rest of this off and kind of guide it easy, easy into place. It's a little less unruly and then taking the whole thing off at a time. Sometimes I find working with big stickers, big pieces of vinyl, as my uh, ne uh, niece and I were doing last weekend, big pieces of duct tape <laughs> that you're trying to make into a letter. It's easier to do it like this, a little piece at a time. So even though you can't hardly see that, then there's pockets there now. Now let's start to work on our glassing bags. We'll pull glassing bags out. You probably have some extras just in case you ran into any type of issue, but you're gonna need nine at least. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I happen to have 10 that was in this one. And I am on the middle of page 12. If you want to do inking of the edges, now is the time to do that. So we're gonna ink the edges of all the glassing bags and I'll show you what it's going to look like in the final one. So see, you can kind of, oh, no, you can't see. See, you can kind of see this brown edging here against the white, the brown edges here. So if I didn't have anything, it would be this pure white. Maybe you can tell a little bit about that. So you can make a decision if you want to do that. So I'm gonna get a little bit of distress ink in that vintage photo. And what I did is I went around the edges on the sides of the pockets, like that. And I did it along the bottom. And of course I did it on the top. And then what I also did is I kind of lifted this front part up and I did this little sawtooth looking front here so that there was some definition from that pocket. So this one's kind of hard to see that there is a pocket where this one is very easy to see. So it's just personal preference there. Let me take one more peek here and see if that's all I need to do. Yes, they get, they get glued back to back on the, the page. So you don't have to worry about doing the back piece of this. So. If you want to do this, do all nine of your glassing bags, which are going to be pockets, and I'll get right back together with you when I have mine finished. Okay, I've got all my nine glassing bags inked up. I found that very therapeutic. <laughs> so we're going to use six of those right now to put uh, the pages together. I'm going to put the other three to the side for now. Those are going to be additional pockets. I'm going to grab my... I just can't help myself. I had to do it one more time. <laughs> I'm going to grab my empty album and now we're going to glue down the pages. Excuse me, I'm going to get one drink. I've been talking too much today. So, grab one of your glassing bags. I'm going to work back to front. So I'm gonna take my glassing bag with the pocket, I'm gonna turn it over, so I'm working on the back. I'm going to butt up the glassing bag to this last um, binding strip that's sticking up, right up to it. I'm going to make sure the bottom of my glassing bag is kind of butted up to that. And then I'm going to take off my liner and I'm simply holding this in place, going to fold it over on top of it. Very easy. You can see at the top, you're gonna to have this sticking out here. So you should have plenty of room at the top, plenty of room at the bottom. So now's the time for you to look and see if you want this to come down a little bit or not. So if you're following along, I am on the bottom of page 12. So this is be a really simple process not having to do a lot of ciphering to do this. All I'm doing is 
with the bag turned upside down on the last binding strip, I'm butting it up right to the score line, right where it's attached to the book, and making sure the bottom of the glassine bag is at the bottom of that, holding it in place, I'm just simply going to turn this over onto it and grab that and hold it into place. So this is going to be the start of our first page. Yay! Easy peasy. There we go. So right now it's kind of flimsy, but as you add more items on top of it, it's going to be much more substantial and it's going to lay flat just like these. You can see how these are the glassing bags and how it becomes a lot more substantial. So the next one, we're still working on the last binding strip. It's going to go face up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the front to the back and then once I get this glued straight on the right hand side, then I will come here, take off that tape binding and push this down. You're just gonna have to make sure you're not going over where the score line is. So just double check that first, but I really want this to line up. So let me take a look and make sure if I do that, that mine's going to line up well. Okie doke. I'm just gonna place some glue, hold on, on the outside of this first bag. I'm going to put the second one face up right on top, trying to get it as even, as exact as I possibly can. That, give it a chance to glue. So basically we're just gluing one front to back with the pockets on the outside. Now you should be good to go on your binding strip here. So you take off that binding strip. Now you got a big flap here. And then just let this naturally fall into place. And if everything lines up correctly, you should not go over that score line. Everything should be good. If you're off just a hair, it's okay. You don't do perfect like Maymay says. I love that. So now I'm just gonna kind of turn this one over. I'm just gonna kind of work it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come in on the bottom and I'm gonna glue the bottoms together. I'm gonna make sure now this is a lot more substantial. You've got two layers now of glassing bags. And you can see mine is not exact. I've got a little puckering right here. I'm not gonna worry about it at all. I'm gonna take my ink and I'm gonna come to the bottom and kind of make it look like one piece. Just like that. So if you want to glue the inside of the tops together, now will be the time to do that. Just make sure you're not gluing your pocket shut on the front or the back. <laughs> Now I have not done that, but it does sound like something I would do when I was talking. So just gonna make sure my pockets are okay and I glue down in that center. So we're just gonna do the same steps again with the second and the third binding strip. So I'm just gonna take off the tape, still working from the back. I'm gonna flip this over upside down, butt it up against that score line where the bottom of the bag is at the bottom of the binding piece and just simply fold it over. That's the easy part, right? I'm not gonna take that off yet. I'm gonna do the same technique. So you might find a different technique that works for you. You might wanna start at um, the binding and work your way over. That might be easier for you. We'll try that this time. I just am a stickler for getting these to line up. That's why I decided to do it this way. But and working here, that, and I think, I looked at the one my mother made after I, um, after she took a kit and worked on hers. I need to get pictures of hers because I think she didn't glue hers together. I think she made flaps like this with an extra one. So there's another idea too. If you want more room in yours, just don't glue them together. Just put on the sides of the binding strips. So I thought that was a great idea when I saw hers and I think that's what she did. 
But for now, this is what I want to do because I want mine to be more substantial and I want pockets on the front and the back. And then we glue another glassine bag to make a half pocket later on. So there we go. There's that one. It's cool. Okay. But anyway, that gives you another option if you like that. My mom is so smart. She knows how to do sewing and crafting and cooking and she worked outside the home and she's just one of those people that just, it seems to all come natural to her. Okay, let's go line this one up. So of course glassing bags are not going to be perfect and they're not gonna be folded perfect, right? So just kind of keep that in mind too. If you see one's off a little bit, that that's probably not you, it's probably how the bags were made. Yeah, I think this technique was a little bit easier. And it also gives you another option if you want to use that extra bag or two that comes in your kit. So that might be the easiest base pages ever in a scrapbook album. And it's definitely unusual, right, to use glassing bags as the base. But I thought when I saw a pack of bags, you know, that would, looks like it would be really fun to use as um, in, a, in an album. So anyway, that's just kind of how it all got started. So let's see where we are. We are on the top of 13. We've got our three pages in, our backs and our fronts, so our six pockets, and now we get to decorate. Okay, I have not cut my papers out, so I'm gonna go and do that, and I will come back and we will um, start decorating. But what I wanted to tell you in your cutting guide is I basically cut and do the same formula on the fronts and backs of all six pages, and I'll show you. So on this front page, you know, I put this uh, long piece of paper here, and I and if you notice, I used some really wide matting. I wanted I wanted you to be able to see this was a glassing bag. So a lot of times I don't mat where there's this much left on the ends, but I did this time. So that's a personal preference. So just keep that in mind as you're following the cutting guide. You may want to measure and cut them larger if you don't like this look. But anyway, the same formula, so I'm gonna cut big pieces on the front and a small piece for the bottom because I'm going to put a glassing bag um, on the front and have another half pocket. So you'll see the same thing on this one. It's just different pieces of paper, but I'm basically using the same formula. So when I tell you, you know, to, to cut this at this um, size, this one at this size, you're gonna do the same thing over on this one and the same thing here. If that makes sense. You're just going to do it three times with three different pieces of paper. So the backs are kind of the same formula. I've got this three quarters of the page piece and then a small a piece and then one that's about a quarter of the page. Kind of see that, how that goes? See this? Now this one, let me flip to this one. This one's the exact same way. You see how it's just different pieces of paper, but the backgrounds are the same. Now this one is done top and bottom, but this I decided I wanted to take advantage of the paper, and so I cut it larger, and I did not glue it down, but on the bottom so I could have a tuck space. But about the same formulas for the front and the back. So maybe that will help you as you're looking at the cutting guide to know how to cut all your paper, because the cutting guide tells you on the first one how to cut the plaid, how to cut, you know, how to get your, um, <clears throat> excuse me, glassing bag done, and what to cut to go over the glassing bag and how to put it together. And then it will go over what to cut, how to lay out the back piece. So you're just gonna kinda do that twice more with different pieces of paper. So I don't go over it again with you because it's exact same measurements. But then you have color photos of which pieces I chose to do that. Now we're gonna do it together, but I wanted to go ahead and let you know if you wanted to get ready for the next video of how to cut out your pattern papers. So we'll do that. Um, then we will do some decorating and we'll do some tags. So I will see you here, same time, same place tomorrow. 
Um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for picking up this kit or the PDF version of the tutorial. If you decide to make one of these, I definitely want to see it and get some inspiration from you. So go and put some photos over on Lisa Wise Designs on our Facebook page. If you love this video, please give it a like. Thanks guys, and I'll see you here tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye.